Hello everyone and welcome to our series on Edpuzzle, where today we're looking at math class and how you can supercharge your classroom teaching with Edpuzzle. Now with everything that's going on, you might be wondering, why should I start using videos in my class? And as a former teacher myself, I can attest to the fact that using Edpuzzle videos with your students gives you superpowers. When students watch a video lesson, they're able to learn content visually, but more importantly, they're able to move at their own pace. We as teachers know some students move faster and other students move slower, but those differences shouldn't determine whether or not a student succeeds. With video lessons, students can watch, pause, and rewatch content as many times as they need to master what they're learning. But if you've ever tried using videos before, you know one of the biggest challenge is holding students accountable. This is where Edpuzzle comes in. We give you the tools you need to hold your students accountable for everything they're learning. And lastly, by embedding interactive questions into your video with Edpuzzle, you shift learning from being passive into being active, which we know leads to higher student engagement and stronger learning. And so all this put together means that Edpuzzle will be a game changer for you and your students, no matter what your learning scenario looks like in this upcoming year. Using video lessons empowers you to deliver an amazing lesson, whether you are in class with your students or not. And so I wanna talk about exactly how this can fit into your math classroom by talking about what goes into a great lesson. Now, I imagine this already looks pretty familiar to you because this is likely what you're already doing every day with your students. They come into class and get introduced to the new content they're learning. You give your students a chance to practice. And with your teacher time, you pull small groups, you give feedback, and you differentiate so that every student gets the support that they need. Edpuzzle fits into the first piece of this. Use video lessons to introduce students to the content they're learning. If you want to get creative, you could even use those videos to help students practice. But the main idea here is that you as a teacher are no longer lecturing and no longer providing direct instruction. That means you have more time and more capacity to work with students individually and in small groups to ensure they each have the support they need to succeed. But rather than listening to me talk about how this can work, I want to actually show you exactly how you can get started using videos in your class. This is not something that takes hours or days or weeks to prepare. This is something that all of you can get started with now. And the easiest way to get started using videos is use an existing video and copy it for your class. It's easy to search for an existing video and spend just a couple minutes embedding questions to make that interactive and some notes to personalize it for your students. And so let me show you how I go about finding an amazing video and turning it into a lesson for my students. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip you over to my screen where I'm over here on Edpuzzle and there are a lot of places I could come to look for content. I could come to the Khan Academy channel. We have all of Khan Academy's videos for you to search through. We've also got the number file channel, which is full of really creative, engaging math videos for your students. But my favorite is always just this main search bar at the top where you can search for any content you might be looking for. Let's search for a lesson on adding fractions and let's do it with the, with the lowest common denominator. That was always a tough topic for my fifth graders. Alrighty, so there are a bunch of good looking results, but I've actually gone ahead and ahead of time, checked out some of these videos, and I really like this one. It does a great job explaining the content clearly and visually. But no matter how good this video is, it isn't really a math lesson yet. To turn this video into a lesson, I'm gonna head over to Edpuzzle's video editor. So I'm gonna start editing this video. And the first thing, if I wanted here, I could cut out sections of the video, but I actually think this entire video is pretty great. So I'm just gonna move over to the questions tab at the top 
And this is where I can make a big difference. One tip I give teachers is start every video with an audio note. This gives you a chance to say hi to your students, let them know what they're watching and why they're watching it, as well as what your expectations for them are during the video. So let's click record. Good morning, everyone. To start math class today, you're gonna watch this video, which does a great job showing you how to add fractions when they have different denominators. Now there are three problems in this video, and I want you to take notes for each one. So before you start, make sure you have your math notebook open. And remember, I expect you to pause the video and write down all of the steps that the video goes through, because you'll be practicing problems like this on your own after. And when I'm done, I'll just end this video note and I can save that directly into the video. Now this was a simple 30 second change, but it can make a big difference for how your students are going to engage with the video. Hearing your voice adds a personal connection and therefore adds purpose to the video. And the information you share helps students better engage with the content and understand what they should be focusing on and how it connects to class. Now, throughout the rest of the video, you should also embed questions to get students thinking. When I embed questions, I think about the kinds of things I ask in class. Maybe it's a quick question, like three times five. It's like a call and response, just to keep students attentive. But other times, I might ask students to tell me what comes next in the problem, why we're doing something, or maybe to solve a piece of the problem on their own. The main idea is passing some of the mental work onto our students because we know students learn not from watching and listening, but when they're the ones doing the thinking and doing the work. So do whatever you need with your questions, but your goal is to pass that mental work onto your students. Now to respect your time, I'm not gonna go through and add all of the questions that I actually would to this video but I do wanna show you some best practices for the end of the video. I end every video with a couple open-ended questions. I might ask students, how confident do you feel or are you feeling about the math you learned in this video? And so students can let me know how they're feeling, how comfortable this was. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll actually click to add another open-ended question and I'll ask students, do you have any questions for me? And so that gives students an open-ended uh, place to ask me any questions they might have. Now, these types of questions are simple for you to embed as the teacher, but they give you such valuable information on who needs help, how confident students are, and how they're feeling about the content. Now, the next thing I make sure to do at the end of every video is include really clear directions on what comes next. So students have finished the video, and now what? And so the way I like to do this is by embedding a note at the end of every single video. And just like at the beginning, my preference is for audio notes so students can hear my voice. So I'll go ahead, I'll just click that record button. Alrighty, now that you've finished this video, it's time for you to practice. You should be able to use the strategies from this video to complete your entire lesson 14 problem set. Remember, if you need help, I'll be on office hours from one to three today. So log into Zoom if you need to work through some problems together. My expectation is you finished the entire problem set before your small group this afternoon. If you're feeling really confused, here's another video you can watch that goes through some more examples. So go ahead, work hard, and I look forward to talking with you soon. All right, so we'll end that note. And that lets students know exactly what to do. I'm gonna link in that extra help video, which is just another uh, Edpuzzle video I found. It's a Khan Academy video that just goes through some more examples. And we'll save that into our lesson and finish editing this video. So it's been just a couple of minutes now, and we've taken what was a fun and engaging math video, but we've really transformed it into a whole lesson where students are learning new content, they're engaging with it, and they have clear actionable steps afterwards for how they should start practicing. So just there, you can transform your classroom. Use existing videos and save yourself teacher time to pull small groups, 
to work individually with students and to give them feedback and differentiation. But sometimes the existing videos might not be a perfect fit. Maybe you're teaching a really specific concept or you need it to match up exactly with what you've been doing in class. And so sometimes the only solution is building your own videos. The good news is it is simple these days to either screen record or use something like a document camera to make a math video lesson. Then you can ask students questions and give them prompts, just like you were teaching live in that lesson. And I'll show you how you can embed those directly into the video on Edpuzzle. This is how I created math videos for my classroom. And it is such a powerful way to connect with your students and help provide instruction. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and plug in my document camera. And so let me go ahead and get that set up. And I'm gonna turn off my main camera so I can write. And here I am. So I've plugged in this document camera and this is a printed out worksheet for my school's curriculum. Now you could use whatever curriculum, whatever problem sets you have. It doesn't have to be this curriculum. This is just what I taught with. But we're gonna record this as a video and go through each of the examples. The key idea though, is I'm going to ask students questions as I work. So it's not just me talking at them, but they're gonna be involved and engaged with the process as they're learning. So let's, let's take a look at how I can do this. I'm gonna go ahead and click record so I can start making this video and we'll dive in. Already class, so you can see in this first problem that we're adding one half and one third. And this is a challenge because these two fractions have different denominators. So to start, I need to find the lowest common denominator of these two fractions. How do I find the lowest common denominator? Well, remember, to find the lowest common denominator, I'll skip count. So let's skip count by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, you could keep going as far as you want. And then we'll skip count by our other denominator, that three. So we have our three, six, nine, 12, and let's do 15, amazing. So now we look for numbers that are in both lists. What number do you see in both lists? You can see that the number six appears in both of these lists. So six, must be our lowest common denominator. We'll write that in. Alrighty, so now that we've found the lowest common denominator, let's convert our fractions. And let's start off with a one half. I want you to do this on your own. One half is equal to how many sixths? Well, you should think to yourself, two times three gets you to six. So you'll do one times three, which gives you three. So we can say that one half is equivalent and can be converted to three sixths. Now let's convert our other fraction, the one third. So we'll take one third and that's equal to how many sixths? Well, three times two gives you six. So if we do one times two, we get two. One third is equal, is converted to two sixths. And so now that we've found these pieces, we just need to add them together, three sixths and two sixths. So let's write that out, three sixths plus two sixths. Solve that on your own. What does it equal? Well, we add three plus two, which gives us five, and we just keep our denominator of six. And that's it, we've solved the problem. So one half plus one third, the answer to this problem is five sixths. Let's circle that. Alrighty, so now that you've seen me do this, I want you to follow these exact same steps and try problem B on your own. What is one third plus one fifth equal? Now, of course, I could go through this just like I did, for example, A, or I could do what I just did there and let students solve it on their own first, and then I would just go over it. But we're just gonna stop this example here. So now that video is saved, 
I'm just going to move over to this Edpuzzle tab and let's upload it directly to Edpuzzle. So in my content, I'm just going to come over, add some content and let's click to upload a video. And then we'll just pick that video file. So where is it? There's that video we just created. Go ahead and upload that. And it's just going to take a minute or two to upload and process on Edpuzzle. So what I actually did is I filmed a, a copy of this beforehand, just so we don't have to wait for it to process now. But you can see it moves pretty quick. We're already 20 or so percent of the way there. But let's head over to this, to this copy. And I'm going to show you how we can edit this video. So I'm going to come over to Edpuzzle's video editor. And the only thing I need to worry about for this video is embedding questions. Now, what I do is I come to those points where you heard me ask a question. So you remember the first one? I asked students how to find the lowest common denominator. That's an open-ended question. We'll type it out. Uh, describe how to find the lowest common denominator of two fractions. Then I can save that. Students will pause, reflect, and respond. And then we'll keep moving. You might remember I went through those skip counts and then I had students identify that the six appears in both of the lists. So six is our lowest common denominator. So let's add that as an actual question. It's a multiple choice. We will ask students uh, what number appears in both of the lists. And then we can put in the correct answer six. We'll put in some other answers just to try and fool our students. So some other numbers from the list, nine, and let's do, uh, not 12, let's do 15. Okay, we'll save that question. And so you see, I just go through the video and wherever I actually asked a question in the lesson, I embed it with Edpuzzle. And that lets students engage in the exact same way as if I were asking them questions in class and they were responding to uh, me in class. And so I ask them questions during the video and then I embed those questions using Edpuzzle. That's all there is. So let's head back over to the slides. And now that I'm no longer writing, I can turn my, my video back on. But that's really all it takes to build your own videos. I want to point out, we spent maybe five or six minutes together building this one, and it was almost completely done. So I really want to stress this. This is not something that takes hours or days or weeks for you to make. If you have 15 or 20 minutes at the end of a school day, if you have a 15 or 20 minute planning period, you can create a video just like this and have that amazing resource ready for your students the next day. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is data analytics. And you get this no matter whether you're using existing videos or if you're building your own. But the data analytics that Edpuzzle can provide are so powerful. You can see who understands and who's confused on a lesson and use that to quickly determine who you're going to pull into a small group. Then you can see exactly where those students are confused that you're pulling into a small group. Figure out where their misconceptions are and so where you need to focus your small group time. Lastly, you can look for whole class trends. Is the whole class doing pretty well or do they need a couple extra days on this unit? And so you can see how they're doing and adapt your next lessons and your future instruction so that every day you're giving students the best lesson for them. And so now I truly believe that you're prepared to start making videos a part of your math classroom. Whether it's finding an existing video, embedding some questions and notes and assigning it to your students, or spending a couple of minutes quickly using a document camera to build your own video lesson, you will open up the possibilities for what your students can achieve and what your classroom can look like when you start using Edpuzzle video lessons in your math class. So good luck. We're so excited to see what you can build and enjoy using Edpuzzle this year.